Welcome, welcome, welcome back again. Fred here. And today we're going to talk about what? Doing a coop? No. No, we're, wait. We're going to talk bananas? No, no. Obviously, I'm talking about the book called The Fish That Ate the Will from Rich Cohen. Obviously. Well, beside the fact that this book mentions a lot of random facts about bananas that you will never forget, like that bananas are actually not a fruit but a herb and that they grow on bushes and not on trees, you will find this story very interesting and amazing stuff happens here. So listen on. First of all, I want to discuss a little bit of a backstory about Sam Samurai, who is the founder of the United Fruit Company, uh, which was a company that just did a lot in selling bananas and making sure that the whole world got to know the banana actually. So Sam Samurai was a Russian immigrant who moved to the US when he was 16 years old. And one time he traveled to South America and he saw the banana. And he loved the banana so much that he made it his business to sell bananas. And when he was 21 years old, he was already a millionaire. So he did really, really well. So just to notice on the back end of the story, uh, I want to now continue with two crazy things that Sam Samurai did in his life. So the first thing that Sam Samurai did that's absolutely crazy is that he did a coup in Honduras, in South America. And it's honestly crazy. So one night Sam Samurai decided that the United States government trying to impose all kinds of import taxes on his bananas and on his equipment was just too much and he put 100 armed men in his banana transport boat and drove to the Honduran government capital and just took over the Honduran government. And Sam Samurai put a political friend of his at his place and in that way Sam Samurai never actually got his uh, taxes on his equipment and bananas. I mean, can you believe that this is around 100 years ago that because he wasn't uh, he, he didn't like the fact that the United States wanted to tax him. He just overthrew the government from Honduras so that he never got his taxes. I mean, if you think about it, isn't that insane? <laughs> and of course, his name was never officially affiliated with this coup, but it was clearly obvious that he was behind this because no one else benefited from this whole coup except for Sam Samurai. Well, the second thing that's absolutely nuts that Sam Samurai did was he also did like a little bit of a coup inside his own company. So again, small backstory uh, that's important to know. United Fruit Company, so Sam Samurai's company, uh, was in a fierce competition with its competitors that also sold bananas across the whole world. And this competition got so fierce that both parties would, during the night, would uh, throw over the trucks from the other companies, uh, destroy their crops and everything that comes with that. It was just completely insane. And the United States government decided that this had to stop. And the only way by, to stop this was to merge both companies as one company. And what happened is that Sam Samurai in the new company, he didn't have a majority vote anymore. So what basically happened is that the executives from the new company, they just decided not to listen to Sam Samurai at all and just, you know, leave him be. He can complain, but he cannot change anything in the company. Well, Sam Samurai was done being disrespected and not being listened to. So what did he do? Without letting anyone know, he approached a lot of rich and wealthy investors that invested in the company and he just bought up all their shares. So in the end, Sam Samuri had again a majority claim at the company without anyone actually knowing. So one day, Sam Samuri walks into the conference room during a board meeting and what he did, <laughs> he walked into the board meeting as if it was any other meeting. And he again did his complaints and no one listened. And then he got really angry, stormed out of the meeting with everyone else just laughing like, okay, Sam, bye, guess we'll never see you again. And five minutes later, he comes back into the conference room 
he has a bag in his hand and just throws it on the table. And everyone in the room was very confused because they didn't know what, what was inside the bag. And they started opening the bag and look at it and they saw that these were all the shares that Sam Samura had bought and that he again has a majority claim at the company. And the executives looked at Sam Samura while he said, you're fired. So he basically did another coup, but then in his own company. I mean, can you actually imagine of this happening? He just did basically two coups in one life. That's insane. Just think about it. <laughs> but honestly, guys, there's so much to learn from Sam Samura's life. And he actually also went by the nickname Sam the Banana Man. One thing that really stuck with me from this book is the famous quote from Sam Smurray, which was, we are here, they are there. And really what it comes down to is the following. Sam Smurray was a really special man because he was an entrepreneur and he started this company. He knew every process of the company as the business grew and he always was at the plantation. He was never just at the office in Boston. No, he was at the plantation. He was doing reports himself. He was interviewing employees and he always knew what was going on and what needed fixing. And instead of writing a very long report, he would just jot down a few notes and just do it and fix it. It really comes down to quote to, we are here with, he is at the plantation. He is at the place where it happens in the company. And there, there are the other executives that are in an office building far away from the company or at a different floor and not really knowing what's going on in the business. And I think nowadays it's very important to take this into account that as an executive or as a manager, you do need to understand that you need to know everything that's going on and to link this with uh, people who are now enrolling from, and, uh, from universities, they often, they often now think that they should start in a really high position in a company. But it's very important that you always understand every process of the company. And the only way to do it is to do it all. So what I really want to say is don't just aim for a very high position in a company at once, but try to understand and find a company where you can see yourself grow in, where you think there are nice opportunities later on and you start low and you understand every process and later on you can manage other people that need to do what you have done before. I think that's a very important thing to learn from this book as well and I really hope that it helps you as well to understand why it's important that you understand every process. I really hope that you learned something from this video and please let me know in the comments what you thought about this video because I would really love to make more of these types of videos in the future. As always, be positive, stay happy, Fred out.